Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Um, this is Joseph Spivey and in this video I'm just going to show you uh, about our Calculus 2 Moodle website, how to navigate it, the important things to pay attention to. Um, first notice that uh, your Moodle site will probably look different. Um, each Moodle site has a theme um, and I've chosen a theme that I like but you can choose whatever thing that you'd like in order to get it to display differently. Um, some work better with your uh, mobile um, devices and some don't. So if you want to um, change the theme, if you come over here uh, and you go to your profile and you go to edit profile, um, the preferred theme is here. You can choose a different theme. They've got a whole bunch of them. So you might want to play around with it and find one you like. Um, so again, if yours looks a little bit different than mine, that's the reason why. And you can get it to be, uh, you can choose your the thing that you'd like. Um, the other thing that I want to uh, highlight is this activities block up here. So I post all due dates to Moodle. All assignments are posted to Moodle. And generally, I don't uh, announce them in class or, or post them anywhere else. I just post them here. And I expect you to check Moodle every day to make sure you are keep up with what our assignments are. Um, they're all going to be here under assignments. Okay, So go ahead and click on assignments and you'll see we've already got a few assignments that are popping up. Right? So there's a reading that's due on the 7th and there's a checklist of things as well and it shows you the due date. So you need to check this every day to make sure that you're keeping up with the assignments um, in this class. Uh, you'll even see that I post test dates uh, as well. Um, I'll post the other test dates later on, um, and I'll post quizzes and portfolio and all the other assignments will be posted here. All right, so that's the assignments part. Um, I also want to point out that your grades are available. Um, so your grades are, you'd have to look around for them. So on my Moodle, they're right here. Uh, on your Moodle, they may be somewhere else. So sort of look around and see if you can find it. Um, but this is what the grade book looks like now and as we go forward and get more assignments this will fill up with all those assignments um, and right now there's no grades but as I as grades are entered um, Moodle will automatically keep track of what your average in the class is um, and it's shown in the course total here okay um, it will even tell you sort of how much each of these things contributes to your course total. So uh, you should always know how you're doing in the class from the gradebook. Um, I, I like the gradebook for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is so that you always know how you're doing in the class, but second is that um, sometimes I make mistakes. And if I make a mistake um, and I post it to the website, you can see and let me know when I've made a mistake. Right? This sort of transparency will allow you to check up on me to make sure that that the grades that I have are the correct grades, and that I'm not making any mistakes in the calculation of those grades. So please check, and if you ever find a discrepancy, if you ever find that I made a mistake, um, just email me, and we'll get it straightened out. All right, so I'm going to go back to the main main Moodle site. Um, this block here contains all the resources for the class. Um, this here, uh, this first link is the syllabus for the class. Uh, it talks about class policies, how grades are administered, all that sort of thing. Um, there, there's a second uh, video about the syllabus, so I'll go through that syllabus in more detail. But if you click on that, you can download the syllabus and take a look at it. You need to read it, please. Um, this is a link to the Wofford College Honor Code. We'll talk a little bit about the Honor Code in the other uh, video, um, but I just want to make sure that you know that the Wofford College Honor Code is important. You signed it. Um, and when you submit assignments in this class, you need to make sure that you uh, abide by the honor code. The next link here is about peer tutoring. Um, so Wofford College has a free peer tutoring system. So if you are not doing well in the class or need extra help in the class, um, you can request uh, a student who has been in this class before and has been successful in this class to be your tutor. It's a really great system, um, and I encourage you, if you're thinking about getting a tutor, go ahead and get a tutor early on. Request a tutor early on. Um, it's a great system. Um, if you click on that, that will give you instructions on how to request, request a peer tutor. Uh, I highly encourage you to consider that alternative if you're at all worried about the class or if you're having trouble with the homework or anything like that. Peer tutoring is a great resource. Um, the next three links, this one, this one, and this one, are all about our textbook. Okay, So our textbook is a special textbook. 
it is a digital textbook that you can download and read on your uh, computer. Um, in order, and it's a free download. So in order to read the textbook, you'll need some special software. The special software you need is called Wolfram CDF Player. CDF stands for Computable Document Format. Um, so you cannot read the textbook until you first download that software. If you click here, it will take you through the instructions for how to download and install that to your computer. Um, the next one is the actual calculus textbook. This is the file that gives you the, the, the calculus textbook. If you click here, um, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, you got to click again. Right. So this is where you can find our textbook. Um, I just recommend downloading the entire, let's see. If you download here, it downloads all the chapters at one time. Each chapter will be its own file. So this is the easiest way to download it, is just to download the whole thing as a zip file. If you would prefer, you can download each chapter individually. First download this chapter, then download that chapter, etc. Uh, it's, it's your choice. Um, but obviously you'll need to download the, the, the file that is the textbook in order to read it. Right? Um, and once you've downloaded the CDF player and downloaded the textbook, you ought to be able to just open up the textbook and read it. The textbook is very, very nice. It has interactive figures that will allow you to um, have sliders that that change the the way that it looks based on what the input values of are the uh, of the sliders. Uh, it's a great resource. Um, it's important to do the reading, so you'll need to download the CDF player and the interactive textbook, um, and it and it should work. Now there are this is important. There are some Mac users who will download the textbook and install Wolfram CDF player, and then they'll try to open a file. Uh, one of the chapters of the textbook, and it will come up garbled, or it will give them an error message. Right? So that will happen for some Mac users. For those Mac users, this this next link includes instructions for how to get around that. Okay, so if you if you're a Mac user and you download the textbook and you cannot open it because it comes up as a weird file, you need to read this these instructions first. I will say um, I've had great uh, success in helping students install um, the textbook and the Wolfram CDF player onto their computer. So if you have trouble, uh, feel free to come by during office hours or set up an appointment and I can take a look at your computer and see if I can get it to be fixed. Um, so th this link is only for those Mac users who are having trouble. Um, you can safely ignore that if you are uh, Windows or if you're a Mac user that did not have trouble. Okay. Um, the next li link is about the GraphLock graphing app. So you can use a graphing calculator for this class. Um, as an alternative, there's this app that you can use called GraphLock. Um, I think it's five dollars. Um, so if you do not have a graphing calculator that is suitable for this class and you do not want to purchase one, but you have a smartphone, I think the GraphLock graphing app is a is a good alternative. So um, you can go ahead and click on that. If you if 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 that's the method that you would prefer, the next link is is WebAssign. Uh, this class has an online homework system, and um, most nights, in order to do your homework, you'll go to WebAssign, and there will be these problems that are posted, and you'll type in your answers, and it will grade it automatically right there on the spot. Um, WebAssign is a very very nice system because it gives you instant feedback. So in the traditional uh, way of grading, you might write down your, your solutions by hand and then turn them in, and you would not receive your grade for another week, let's say, if it take, takes me a week to grade it. Um, this is problematic because it could be that you had some sort of misconception, and if you had a misconception, you wouldn't know about that misconception for another week until you got it back, got it graded. Um, WebAssign will tell you right then if there's an issue, so that you can come to um, my office or to a peer tutor or whatever to get that misconception cleared up right there on the spot instead of having to wait a week. So that instant feedback is very nice. The other nice thing about WebAssign is it allows me to give you multiple chances to get a problem right. I care that you understand the material and that you eventually get it right. I don't care if you get it right your first time. That's not important for, you, for me. So I give, uh, for most problems, I give 100 tries for you to get it correct. <clears throat> that's, that's sufficient, right? Um, so I, I think WebAssign is a great system for those reasons. Um, you do have to pay for it. Um, so here's what you should do. Uh, you should click on WebAssign on this link and it will first set up a link between Moodle and the WebAssign system. 
Um, if you've already been in a class that that has WebAssign, um, it will ask you for your password. Uh, and if you have never used WebAssign, it will ask you to create an account or to link an account. Um, it, it's fairly straightforward. If you have any questions about setting up that link, you can bring your computer uh, to my office and we can take a look at it. Um, but the, again, the first time you click on that link, you'll have to set some stuff up. After that, you just log into Moodle and click on WebAssign and you'll be good to go. It is important to note that you should always go to WebAssign through Moodle. It's just going to work better that way. I've had students who tried to type in WebAssign into the, the browser bar up here, and things go awry very, very quickly. So I want to encourage you to use the link in Moodle to get to WebAssign. Um, again, WebAssign is where that homework is posted. Uh, and I th Oh yeah, there's one other thing I want to say about WebAssign. Um, it, it is, you do have to pay for it. So there are two methods to pay for it. One is to purchase a WebAssign access card from the bookstore, and it has a code on it that you can type in to WebAssign directly. And the second method is to use a credit card. So you can use either of those methods to pay for WebAssign. Um, your first couple of weeks are free. There's a grace period. So if you decide to drop the class, um, you don't have to... Um, you can you can use WebAssign for the first week, and if you without paying for it, and if you drop it, then you won't have paid for it. Does that make sense? So I would wait to type that access code in, or wait to pay for it until after the drop ad period, after you know that you're going to stay in the class. Um, so that's a, that grace period is very very nice. Um, the the final two links here. Um, when we have tests, I'll post keys in this folder right here. And we have handouts most days, um, and I will post those in this folder here. Um, sometimes I get behind on posting uh, handouts to the folder, and if you are absent or lose one, and you would and you need it, and it's not there, then just email me and remind me to post, and I will I will get on top of it. Right. And finally, um, I organize the Moodle site by day. So um, this is this is the first day of class, Monday, Fe February fifth, um, and these are the assignments. So um, when we have class on Wednesday, it will go here, and it'll just sort of add stuff. Um, I do want to point out that the, the reading is posted, so go ahead and do it. Um, and this is a checklist of things that you ought to do before Wednesday's class, okay? So you should watch the videos. This is one of them. You should get a graphing calculator or get GraphLock. Um, and if you don't do this by Wednesday, it's okay, not a big deal. You should set up your WebAssign link by clicking on that WebAssign link up there and following the directions. Um, you should definitely download the textbook and make sure it works. Right? Um, and on Wednesday, we're going to be using your computer. We're going to be using files from the textbook in class. So you should bring your laptop to class on Wednesday. Right? And obviously, you should do this on reading. Um, so I think that that's all I wanted to say about Moodle. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I encourage you to check out our next video, which goes through the course policies, which goes through the syllabus in detail to take a look at what those course policies look like. All right. Thanks very much.